Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's session on service mapping out of the possible. My name is Bill Ifland, and I am a product success technical director here at ServiceNow. I joined ServiceNow as an ITOM Ranger in 2018 and have been a practitioner on the platform using ITSM and ITOM since 2007. Today, we'll be exploring how service mapping population methods can unlock the potential of application services by providing a clear, actionable overview of services as defined by the CSDM framework and our infrastructure configuration items. This introduction begins a five-part series at showcasing the aspects, approaches, and use cases for populating, aka mapping, the same single production application service stack effectively. We'll cover what's possible how to approach the population methods, and how each method collects the infrastructure CIs and renders them. Before we begin, I want to highlight our safe harbor statement. Please note that some information shared here today and in the five-part series may be forward-looking and subject to change. Before we dive into the details, let's take a look at today's agenda to guide our discussion We'll start with a quick introduction of the CIs and the classes in the context of our five-part series. Next, we'll look at the specific CIs of the MediaWiki business application. Following that, we'll do a brief architecture review to understand how all the pieces fit together. We'll then quickly review the population methods in the application service summary, which are the chapters of our five-part series. And finally, we'll wrap up with a live demo in my IFI instance, where I'll show you how all the CIs look in practice. Let's get started. Here are the classes that we will encounter as we do our five-part series. From the CSDM framework, in the design domain, we'll be using a business application. From the cell consumed domain, we'll be seeing business service and business service offerings. Then from the technical services domain, this is going to be the main focus of the five-part series, how to build application services from the same stack using the different techniques. We will have a production and a development service. We'll be focusing only on the production service. We'll also be looking at the parts from the application CIs and from the server CIs. Let's consider a typical application stack. Usually you have a layer that is the presentation and the application logic layer, and then a data layer. Common implementations could be Microsoft IIS using Microsoft SQL Server, or perhaps Apache Server connected to MySQL database. Often load balancers are introduced to front end these application stacks to provide better scalability and reliability. Now let's look at the MediaWiki business application. This application will be what we will build our application services on. We have a lab named Crucible, accessible to us ITOM Rangers, that simulates enterprise infrastructure, which includes client server application software, Windows and Linux servers, load balances, middleware servers, and database servers. For the purposes of the art of possible, we're looking at using the MediaWiki business application. MediaWiki is a free open source product that powers thousands of wikis, including the Wikipedia. Leveraging the CSDM, specifically, we're going to name our business application MediaWiki. Our business service is going to be collaboration and documentation, and we'll be providing two offerings, a production document and a development document offering. It is inferred that we're going to have a production stack and a development stack. Notice the difference is the clustering of three Apache servers in production. Now let's look at how all of these pieces fit together for the MediaWiki business application. Specifically with the production stack, we have a server that is our load balancer server, cluster of three Apache servers, and one database server. 
On each of these servers are the application CIs that are running. A load balancer provided by HAProxy software, the application layer with Apache servers, and then the database layer with MySQL. These five servers and the respective applications become the infrastructure CIs used in our five-part series. Now let's look at a summary of application services. Recall that a class determines your population method. In part one, we're going to look at dynamic CI groups. Part two, we're going to look at manual mapping. In part three, we're going to take a look at how tags from our cloud or on-premise virtual environment can be used to visualize service maps. Part four is going to look at discovered or top-down applications and focus on pattern-based connections. And in part five, we're going to leverage machine learning and use connection suggestions. You can use both connection practices in the same application service. Another point of information is dynamic CI groups, manual services, and tag-based services do not create clusters and do not support cluster impact. However, top-down discovered service maps do create clusters and provide impact. We'll now transition into a live demo from my IFI instance to showcase the CIs and application services in this five-part series. Please note that these application services have been pre-mapped to streamline the video presentation. And I will spotlight each method individually respective part in this series. Now let's hop over to my IFI instance. As you can see, I have built out service groups according to each application service class which implies, again, the population method used. For the MediaWiki business application, we have an application service stack for production and an application service stack for development. Again, we're just focusing on production for this series. In part one, we will explore dynamic CI groups. As you can see, dynamic CI groups render the infrastructure CIs in a list view. In part two, we'll build a manual application service and purposely select only the Linux servers, but add them in a fashion that constructs the topology or the architecture that the application uses. Part three, we will build out our tag-based application service from the virtual machine instances that were tagged during provisioning. We will further use traversal rules in CIs that were found using IP-based discovery to build out topologies. In part four, we'll look at top-down discovery with pattern connections. The patterns were updated to align to the MediaWiki architecture, and we'll briefly explore those customizations. Part five, we will still use top-down discovery but then leverage the machine learning and traffic-based connection rules to produce the last layer of the service map. Now let's wrap up our demo by reviewing the configuration items that we will encounter. First, we have our business application, MediaWiki. Notice that it consumes, according to the CSDM definition, application services, I also want to highlight the dynamic CI groups in the purposes of our series is going to be treated like an application service. So it also is consumed. We have our business service, collaboration and documentation. Notice it does not contain the name MediaWiki. That is on purpose and is a best practice not to name your services the same name as your products. And it has two offerings production and development documents. And according to CSDM framework, these service offerings depend on its specific application service. And here's a quick summary again of our application services. Here are the servers that we'll encounter. And lastly, 
the applications that are running on those servers. I would like to thank you for joining me today. See you in the next session.